Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you clicked on this video for one of two reasons. Either you like Mustangs or you like drifting. Or I guess you could like the combination of the two and that's why you're here and you're wondering to yourself, should you build a Mustang for drifting for yourself? Now, I think that's going to lead to a subjective answer. I think everyone's priorities are a little bit different. So I can't tell you whether you should or shouldn't. But what I can do as somebody that has gone through and built one of these cars, give you a list of pros and cons to determine whether or not it aligns with what you're trying to accomplish. You know what I mean? So let's rip off the bandaid and get straight into the ugly bits. That way we can end off on a good note, right? So some of the parts that I dislike about building a Mustang for a drift car. In this video, I'm specifically talking about like the 79 to 04 Mustangs because they're all kind of the same. The biggest dislike I have with this car is the stock turning radius. I believe stock versus stock, a BMW 3 Series with a welded diff or a Nissan 350Z on track is going to be a lot more enjoyable than a bone stock Mustang. I don't care if you have a GT, a base model, whatever it is, the stock angle is so bad that like as soon as you get the car, you better order yourself an angle kit because you're just not going to have fun with this car out on track with a stock angle. Now the second thing that I dislike about these cars is how low the exhaust hangs. Basically the exhaust hangs lower than the floor pan. So if you get into drifting and you like just absolutely slammed cars, I get it for like style points. I'm, I'm all about it. You cannot slam one of these Mustangs. I mean, mine is about as low as you can get it. And even then I scrape on everything and I actually want to raise my suspension because I'm tired of scraping. When it comes to dislikes, that's really about all I got for you is just a stock angle and the low hanging exhaust. If you can overcome those two obstacles, then you're nice and dandy. Now for some of the things that I do enjoy about having a Mustang for a drift car, and that is one is the availability of these cars. I mean, Ford made so many Mustangs that like, I don't think there's ever going to be a shortage of them, at least not for a very long time versus like the 240 SXs and like the E36s are becoming hard to find. So bar none, just the best availability when it comes to actually finding a chassis to start with. Number two on the list of pros is going to be the aftermarket support for these cars. 10 years ago, the drift community really wasn't very big on Mustang parts. Uh, it has grown since then, so you can get angle kits and uh, hydro e-brake setups and stuff like that. But outside of the drift community, because guys have been drag racing these cars forever, and again, because the availability of the chassis is through the roof, there is no shortage of aftermarket parts for these cars. Wheels, brakes, bodywork, LS swap parts. I mean, to put it in perspective, I had an S13 that was LS swapped a long time ago, and the headers on that car were $600 because they weren't very common. Versus like guys that are LS swapping Mustangs, it's probably 10 times as many uh, LS swap Mustang guys. So like headers for this car were 140 bucks. So you really can't beat the aftermarket support. And the third and final thing on my list of upsides when it comes to Mustang drift cars is going to be if you can get a good spec, I mean like a GT with a manual, you are getting a solid, solid drivetrain. I know everyone dogs on the, the two valve four sixes, but right out of the box, like 260 foot pounds of torque for like a beginner drift car, that's pretty stout. You know what I mean? Like that's way better than like stock 240s or even stock BMWs. The 350Z makes a little bit more power than a GT Mustang, but it doesn't have the sounds, right? Like you get a GT two valve Mustang and you get the sweet V8 noises. So for that reason, the engines I, I would vote for as a good choice. The five speed manual should handle decent power. I mean, if you start like boosting it and hitting five, 600 horsepower, you might want to look into a different transmission. But the rear axle on these cars, bulletproof. The four 8.8s that come in the GTs, they come with the disc brakes, so you don't have to worry about like the drums like on the Fox bodies, the 79 to 93. If you get a 94 and up, you'll have disc brakes. The 8.8 .8 from the factory comes with LSD. Now, being an older car, there is a chance that the clutch packs on the rear diff are worn out and due to be replaced. But that goes back to reason number two on my list is that the parts are readily available and pretty cheap. I paid somebody to rebuild my rear end and I had them change the gear ratio and everything. And I believe I was about 350 bucks all in. So that's like full clutch rebuild. That's re-gearing from the 327, I think is a stock ratio to 373s. So dealing with that rear end is a pleasure and you'll probably enjoy that if you do get into one of these cars. Hopefully this helps you make a more educated decision on whether or not you want to get into one of these cars. So answer down in the comment section below. Do you think you should build a Mustang for drifting?